Hey everybody and welcome to a throbbing wild ride with Steve-O. Can we say, whoa, we got Joey Lawrence this week. Star of hit shows like Blossom and he's graced the cover of every teeny bopper heart throb magazine there ever was, man. What a treat it was to talk to this guy. And I gotta say to this day, he is very good looking. So maybe you want to consume this content with a little bit of privacy. I'm just saying. Maybe you just love privacy like I do. Maybe you care about cybersecurity like I do. That's why I use NordVPN. It's the fastest virtual private network out there and it costs barely what a cup of coffee costs per month. And I'm telling you, it prevents people from snooping around in your bank details, your passwords, taking your online identity. I'm telling you, the safety from NordVPN is what I love, especially when I'm traveling. And boy, do I have a deal for you. If you go to NordVPN, that's N-O-R-D-V-P-N dot com slash Stevo, you get a huge discount plus a free gift and it's totally risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Absolutely no risk, total cybersecurity, and you can treat yourself to content from all around the world that would otherwise be geo-blocked. So head over to NordVPN.com slash Devo to jump on this deal, and let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Lawrence. Hey, yeah, how you doing, man? Dude, the original J Law. That's right. <laughs> You're right about that. You're I right about that. That's funny. Scott. How'd you come up with that? Yeah, <laughs> man. Scott said that before uh, you came in the van. I said, dude, I'm stealing that. You can do it. It's great. It's true. It really is You're true. You're the original. The this original. is my 40th year of doing this. Is that crazy? Wow. <laughs> I, I mean, dude, it's, it's insane. Yeah, I saw on your Wikipedia, uh, years active, 1982 to right. present. Right, right. Right, Jesus. my 40th year. And that's commercials yeah. you started doing. Started commercials in New York when I was a little kid and did uh, like several of them that first year. You know, I think we did like 60 national commercials or something like that in a wow. year, which is, you know, that's crazy, right? You don't realize. But uh, And then it was one of those classic things back when, you know, the legends were still sort of around us. You know, Carson's guys saw that and mm -hmm. I was all over the TVs, you know, Tylenol commercials and Kool-Aid commercials, all these things. Yeah. And they're like, let's get this little kid on, you know? And um, I had to go audition. I had to go out to California. They flew me out from Philadelphia, which is where I'm from, and uh, I was tapping. I had been tapping for like two years because I love to dance. Tap dancing. Mm. Yeah, from the time I was like wow. three and a half. So when I was five, I was I could tap a little bit, you know, I guess. So they That's his way of saying he ripped. Yeah. Well, ripped. so they brought me <laughs> so they brought me out to California and uh, I'll never forget my mom flew out with me and they put us up at the Sheridan, uh, which is still there. That like Sheridan Universal? with the orange neon, that same hotel. Yeah. 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 Um, I and think we use that for everybody uh, around Jackass. Yeah. Like, I'm sure. Like yeah, that's, it's still like the predominant hotel for this area. Yeah, we dropped towners. your bus off there too when we, we did the. That, that was where we did the put this podcast with Dave. Dave Aaron. Aaron. It was parked there. Yeah, oh, that's, that's crazy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I and I went and auditioned at the old NBC studios. Uh, Carson was in the room and Ed DeCordova and his producer and everyone was smoking in there. I remember that and it was like shag carpet. And they said, "What can you do?" So we had an interview and they said, "What can you do?" I said, "Well, I can tap." And they said, "Great." They said. So I had my boombox with me and my song prepared, you know, to tap, but there was carpet. What, 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 were, were you tapping to something you're supposed to tap to, or was it like... Well, I had prepared something my tap teacher gave me, like, give my regards to Broadway. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so I Were you too young to be nervous at that point, or were you like, not oh, nervous. shit, it's No, Johnny I was Carson. not, I had no idea. What I mean, a cool I, question. Yeah, yeah I had yeah. no idea, really. I mean, I, he looked like exactly like my grandfather, which he really did, and he was cool, and I knew my parents said, this is like, this is pretty cool, so go in there and do your best. So I was just doing my best. I didn't really understand the, the magnitude of what that was. But I told him I couldn't tap. I said, listen, I can't tap in here because there's no there's no hard floors. And Johnny was sitting behind this massive desk, true story. And so he said, get on the desk? They cleared the desk off and, I, and he picked me up and put me on the desk and they pressed play. And I guess I did a good job because we walked out of there and we literally got back to the hotel and we went home. And when we got home, there was an answering machine message from Brandon Tartikoff, who was running NBC at the time. They said, listen, Johnny, you know, loved it. We want to have him back on the show. And, you know, it was an hour and a half back then. So mm -hmm. uh, big Friday night show. So I flew right back and... Uh 
You know? so, so, so this tap dancing on the desk actually happened on live television. No, it didn't. It was my audition. Okay, it was because you because unless you were like really famous, right, right, you had to go in there and sort of like I mean Carson, you know that was back then when if you were on Carson the next day like. Everything changed. I mean, yeah. he launched Seinfeld. I mean, it, the list right. goes on and on and on. Don Rickles, you know, all that stuff was on there, and then all of a sudden, like, became household name. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they said Johnny's going to have him on. He's going to come out do a quick interview, and he'll probably let him sing and tap dance one song. I had two prepared, but he said just one. So I had to. Re I, re I rehearsed with Doc Severinsen in the band. I'll never forget that. The floor was this black lacquer, which was oh, really slippery. I'm so heartbroken that they didn't have you. Tap on the desk. I know. Was so cool. I, know. I mean, dude, it's so much cooler. I know. So I went out there and did my thing, and they said, we're going to do the song and then talk a little bit. And uh, apparently the conversation went really well because it's it was on, like, the best of tapes. You know, I told wow. them that I was up. The only time I'd seen the show was when I was up vomiting, which is true. And I guess, you know, Johnny with the deadpan to the audience was just brilliant. I didn't understand any of that, but sure. looking back, I do. And then... Uh, when I'm up vomiting, why, why would you be up vomiting? I was sick. So it was late. I was sick. So <laughs> yeah. the only time I was up, I could ever see the show. I'm, you know? like, I'm thinking, like, are you, were you hung over? Like, no, at five? I was, just, like, no, were you I was drunk? Like, when I was sick in my <laughs> stomach. I, whatever it was, I had the flu. Right. My parents were like, I was in my parents' room. I was vomiting, and Carson was on. You right. know, as it was in 70% of the households in right, the United right. States. Yeah, during that trying to have a career in show business. He needed to keep his figure. Right. <laughs> yes, oh, right. God. <laughs> he was up vomiting. Right. Already, yeah. But wait, so at the time, you're introed as, like, this is just some kid. He's a great talent. He's a great talent. You've probably seen him all over the television oh, on okay. Tylenol commercials and Coca-Cola commercials. Amazing. and da -da -da. We thought we'd have him on and have some fun. Johnny would do that from time to time. Dude, and, that's great. And uh, I guess I kicked butt on the first number. So the interview went so well that afterwards the producer came up and said listen we're going to have you talk more and go back out and do the second song so I was on for like like ah. 18 minutes which as you wow. know is unheard of yeah. I mean it's, it just doesn't happen so and Joan Rivers I guess followed me out afterwards and when I was done and they saw me off she came out on her knees and was like there's no way I can follow that so the next day NBC called and said, listen, we'd love to sign him and we have a couple of pilots. And so I started doing, I did uh, a, a pilot for NBC with Bob Denver called Scamps. Wow. That Sherwood Schwartz created, mm -hmm. right? Brady Bunch. And, all that. and then and then I did a pilot f uh, that was Ron Howard's first directing job called Little Shots with uh, a bunch of young kids that went on to do great things. And um, finally they put me and give me a, give me a break, which worked and got picked up. Wow. So... Bob Denver. I mean, I'm just that that trip to because Bob Denver was a, like a, sort of a country musician, country road, take me home. No, 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 no. the actor, the actor. Oh, yeah, okay. Who, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm John thinking, Denver. Uh, John Denver. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bob Denver was Gilligan. You ever see Gilligan's oh, Island? Bob Denver was Gilligan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there yeah, we yeah. go. So, oh, oh, Gilligan. Yeah, Gilligan. Exactly, yeah. Gilligan. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Sherwood sure Schwartz did Gilligan's Island too, right? He did. He produced that. Too. He was one of those epic, you know, producers. You know, yeah. yeah, like Norman Lear. You know, did a bunch of great shows like. That. Spelling, he's like a yeah. it's like a spelling guy. Yeah, you know, had a bunch of great shows in the in the golden age of TV. You know, uh, so they they put me in two pilots, didn't go, and then they had just shot a a, a show with um, a Tony Award winner, Nell Carter, who was like a triple threat, multi talented, amazing, funny lady who could sing and, and dance and everything. And she had her own show called Give Me a Break, you know, which was groundbreaking at the time yeah. in 1982. And uh, they were going to add a little car a little kid to it. And they and they shot the pilot and, and was like we need something before we go to series and so they put me in that and that show became a massive hit and that was kind of how I got my start with NBC. And you're not shuttling back and forth between Philly and LA to do all these jobs. You kind of just made the move. I was, believe it or not, we did not officially move. We 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 bought a house here. We rented a house, then we bought a house, but we didn't officially move here till like '95. You know, wow. Yeah. What was that law that uh, all the, they're talking yeah, about? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. We've you? had a bunch of people that talked about that law. The Coogan um, law. The yeah, the Freddy Freddy Cougar law. Where <laughs> yeah. the, uh, Freddy Cougar. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the guy with the uh, spikes. <laughs> yeah. He told you to put your money away, and you yeah. did it. Because yeah. he'd yeah. kill you if you didn't. Right. No. Your, your parents are only allowed to blow eighty-five percent of your money. Well, that's <laughs> what's <laughs> right. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna save twenty percent for you. Yeah, we'll have nothing else. But no, uh, yeah, I mean they do that. It goes into a you know a trust account, a blocked trust account, a certain portion of it. Well, how were your parents though with managing their ch sorry there's like a bee in here and i'm allergic to bees so i got the shoe You're but um <laughs> how there, there's a there's a bee in here i hate to overstate the obvious but there's also a bee in boner and if you want to get 
a serious boner, then may I suggest you try Blue Chew tablets because they are delicious, chewable tablets with the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except they cost only a fraction of the price. And if you ever thought it might be fun to try these boner tablets, let me assure you, it is a hoot. I have the best time with it. And you don't have to go to an awkward visit to the doctor to get your Blue Chew tablets because all you got to do is go to bluechew.com and consult with a medical provider right there on the site. And it's quick and it's easy. And when you use the promo code Stevo, you get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets absolutely for free all you have to pay is five dollars for shipping again if you ever thought it might be fun to try some of these tablets you were right and you should so go to bluechew.com use the promo code stevo and get an entire month's supply of blue chew tablets for free all you got to pay is five bucks for shipping so hop on it and have a blast now Let's see what happened with that bee. There's like a big bee. There's a gnarly bee well, up go there. Go get it. I Come hate on, bees too, dude. man. Do you, ha do you, have a, you know what's funny about bees? <laughs> yeah, I have the, an Here's the deal pen. about bees. I love bees. Vital to you know everything. I that agree. Exist, but here's the deal. They don't leave your ass alone. Like you know that theory. If you don't bother it. It won't bother you. I know. Yeah, well, energy. You're that talking is, to the bee expert right yeah. here. Hey, I've been stung. I haven't been doing shit. I've been sitting there in a chair. Yeah. Look at the bee's great. Bee's great. <laughs> Come, the, that bee just stung me. I didn't do anything yeah. to that bee. Nothing. Right? I got a that close was my whole eye career. on this guy. Every time with bees, like if, yeah. I, if I just chilled, nothing happened. And then there's a bee scene in our new Jackass movie. Right. The second those bees came out, they just started lighting me up. Really? How well, many, you got stung a lot? Shit. I didn't do shit. See, I, I didn't deserve it. I heard it was a carbon dioxide thing. Maybe bees have changed. Like, they've yeah, changed man, their tune. They, they just, if you yeah. get it, get it, bro. You uh, know, but or, I'm afraid if I swing at it, then he's... Ah! <laughs> did he fly out? He flew out. There you go. Yeah. Holy shit. Dude, that was, dude, that was pretty awesome. funny. <laughs> um, okay, he my knew, question man. You was, held up that shoe. you like... I know, yeah, out. you felt the shoe. Well, you feel it, yeah. How were your parents with managing, like, a child star and the it money and the fame? My parents were fine with all that. You know, I mean, it was... What did they do... In their own careers. My my uh, mother was a school teacher. Uh, okay. Has a master's degree in like early childhood development. Did all that kind of stuff. She taught like third grade. Amazing. And then my dad just sold like insurance. So yeah, they didn't. And you know, this was like out of the blue that it took off like this. So uh, you know, the family. We sort of every three weeks. My mom school was very important. So I was enrolled in a in a little. Believe it or not, private little, little Quaker school because education was so good back there. It was a friend's school back on the East Coast. The friend's school system is like a really great school system. So you have mm -hmm. Abington friends and Georgetown friends and all these things. Anyway, um, so she kept me. I was a lifer there. I graduated from there. Every three weeks, I'd fly back, take all my tests. All my friends were from there. It was the greatest thing ever. And then for three years, in between Give Me a Break and Blossom, she pulled me completely out of the business except for commercials and a couple little movies here and there during the summer. But I had no schedule other than she wanted me enrolled in middle school. She thought it was paramount for development, you know, and relationships. And honestly, man, it was the greatest three years. I'm so glad I had it because the context, I never got caught up in any of that stuff. It was mm -hmm. always like, this is my work, like right. Little League Baseball. That's how we treated it. Like traveling teams, you know, I got friends, dear... They, they have children. They travel all over the place. My girls were both in, in dance leagues and we traveled to competitions. Sure. My parents, and my mom was the same way. She was like, this is how we're going to treat it. So it was never became my life. It just became something I love to do. Um, and my friends, all my friends were my school friends. I didn't, I'm like, I knew everybody, but I didn't have any actor friends, you know, like I wouldn't hang out with anybody. Wow. I would hang out with my friends from back east. And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the school was a Quaker school. Yeah, it was a Quaker school. But it was just, I mean, That's I probably think. Probably better because the experience that we've had talking to child stars is that there's this weird phenomenon where you're a child star you're successful you're you know talented you're like but you're you, you draw all of this bullying and like yeah you know like no. it, it's, it's weird and so, i mean i got a little bit of that you know i think that we were you know it wasn't as highlighted as it is today i think because of social media it's like a platform you know not only look there was always been bullying i mean always i got you know i got locked you know when i went when i it's funny later on when i came back and i was for like seventh and eighth grade you know sixth seventh and eighth grade the high schoolers you know i was pretty famous by then so all my friends i had known them since i was five most of the kids believe it like 80 percent of my 
my class were lifers. So we grew up and graduated together. It was That's cool. Uh, I mean, again, these things you don't realize how crazy wonderful that is and what a blessing that is but it was amazing mm -hmm. so but you know some of the high schoolers i got locked in the high school bathroom for like three hours you know <laughs> that, yeah i mean i got you know there was a little bit of that i right. got made fun of because i'd come back with like doc martens you know and they'd be like what in it you know and, uh, and then sure enough but like two months later once they got to philly everybody was wearing them you know yeah, everybody was copying yeah. me so right. you know it, that stuff happens but i feel like today there's such a platform for bullies to be emboldened that there's yeah. a lot more of it because i think that just like anything else you highlight somebody's yeah. bad behavior and if they're drawn to that it emboldens them and now you hear about you know horrible things but i got a little bit of that how old were you when you're doing blossom i got that show when i was uh like 13. so then you went to high school <laughs> While you were mm -hmm. on Blossom, yeah, thirteen it, and nineteen. You had mm -hmm. the long hair. Yeah, is that why you hated the long hair? That's why. Yeah, well, I yes, because I didn't mind it until I couldn't change it. Mm. You know, because that became uh, part of my character. Yeah, you got stuck. So yeah, so when that was over, and you know, and we did Brotherly Love, I cut it fairly short, like the second season of that show. And then when I was done with that, uh, I uh, right after American Dreams, I just buzzed it. You know, because that was like. I just wanted to do that. Yeah, everybody like, thought like, like Britney Spears. Everybody thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my gosh! Just like oh Britney Spears. God. Oh my god! Yeah. So uh, yeah. So that was sort of my thing, and, it, and then I had shaved for a while. You know? Such a such a healthy, well-adjusted approach to to your career is what I'm hearing. You know, it like, really was, man. I mean, look, it, it, it's always been. Look, there are ups and downs to everything. I'm still 40 years in. I haven't accomplished anything like a ton of stuff that i want that i don't want to and you see people getting shots that you wish you got it happens everybody sure. you know and you wonder why and i've always had to work so hard to like reestablish things you know some people they get in that and then they just pop from one to one you know the next one the next one you just wow amazing I, it's pretty rare it, Long, it is longevity rare. is pretty rare it is so for me i've i've been around a long time but there's been ups and downs and and i've had to really 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 work to break down a lot of barriers along the way because you have that kind of success as a kid it's great but on the other side of it is you get typecast a lot and a lot of people think that you do your job really well i mean at the end of the day matt leblanc was basically playing Joey Russo, right, at 25 on Friends. I mean, as a matter of fact, they named, you know, it was Joey Tribbiani. So, like, NBC knew exactly what was going on with those two things. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, Matt would, he, I think they had him come to the stage when they were shooting, when they were in their early development of Friends to watch how I was playing that character. Because when you play a dumb character, if he's innocent and he's a womanizer, you can get away with anything because he's not like a lecherous person. So, Joey Russo got away with a lot of stuff because he was just innocent. You know, like, oh my right. God, I love boobs. They're amazing. That's not disrespectful because right. he's just being genuinely right. honest, you know? Sure. Right. Instead of like going, yeah, baby. You know, once it gets into that, and Matt LeBlanc did that beautifully at 25. I was 15, so Matt LeBlanc was, you know, you get nominated, you know, you get nominated, you get Golden Globes and things. At 15, they just think, oh, that must be what he is, you know? So coming right, out right, of that, right. there's, a, there's a lot of transition that has uh. to happen, and you have to you have break down a lot of barriers that shouldn't be there because as actors, that's what we get paid to do is play different characters. So, like, yeah. why wouldn't you be able to do that, you right. know? So, anyway, but it's been great, man. I'm still here, still doing what I love to do. and Still shockingly in. good looking, man. Oh, I mean, good I mean, what's the secret to the, to the fountain I mean, dude, of youth? You, you're 45. I'll be 46 in April, man. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> like, uh, like, have you just been... <laughs> Have you been uh, with the creams and like the like? You know, I I've always my my grandfather was you know he he lived till ninety two would have lived probably till hundred if he hadn't fallen classic case of like falling and just it going downhill quickly but he said you get one can what you put in is you know what you get out of it so it I I always I was I loved playing sports and when I was working a lot and especially on the blossom years I they didn't want me to play a lot of the I played football and you know baseball and I broke my thumb and then that was it like they didn't want me playing any sports so I started to put it into like just physical fitness but like health not not about size not about like how big can I get not about how many plates can I put on there it was always about physical health you know and mm -hmm. if you're fit as a byproduct of being healthy then that's dope you know but it was not about like you know and like these guys like the rock and stuff they're just right. so big i mean i i don't want it that's awesome right. but that was never what it was for me you know um so that's part of it is that i've always tried to eat really clean um and i and i and i you know have whatever i want just in moderation i, I don't believe in diets because i think as soon as you say no <laughs> carbs keto this keto I mean, this you're doomed because yeah. you got to have whatever you want. If I want cookies, I eat them. Ice cream, pizza, I have it all. I just have it in moderation and I eat 
good around it, you know? <laughs> yeah. We're, we're both like I'm so like shameful of my <laughs> No, no, but diet. no. No, no, but that's not what hey, Scott wants cookies and ice cream, he eats it too. Yeah. <laughs> You no, guys are on the same diet. So yeah, it's partially wow. that. It's partially genetics. Inspiring. You know, my my grandfather looked awesome. I mean, he looked. You know, when 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 he was ninety, he looked like seventy five. You know what I mean? He just did. I mean, Maybe. so my mom looks great. So, so I know that's part genes. of it. Yeah, I think it's genes. Because there are people who just did heroin and cocaine and well, like, and it just preserved them. You know, yeah, like that's it, true. Mm -hmm. It can go one of two ways. All that stuff can right. preserve you, or you fool around. <laughs> like they always said, you know, you you go nuts in your teens and your twenties and your thirties. It like shows up on your face in your 40s right, and you're right, like oh right, my right. god what happened but the body will disintegrate at some point um and you know i don't know i just try to you it's, know it's, i use creams i like yeah. creams man i i haven't done you know like the surgeries i don't i don't really want to do that because right. i think guys always look well I don't you know. can't stop once right. you start well yeah, that's that's the thing like especially guys like you start messing around with the eyes and it, yeah. it's, you start to look different like guys look, look like they get this weird like they mm -hmm. just witnessed a murder thing and like yeah. it's <laughs> never changes right. uh -huh. just like you just want to get the 11 you know, out, and all of a sudden you're like... It's like this thing, like, what's happening? Why is he looking like that? And it's like, that's how yeah. he always yeah. looks now, you know? Just yeah. look old. Like, dudes look good looking old. Same well, with ladies. They don't need You know, all I that think that there's either. something to be said about a little bit of preservation, but, but let it gracefully sort of happen, because what happens is you get all this plastic surgery, or you get all the fillers and everything, and so many of these, even men or beautiful women, they you end up thinking they're older than they actually even are. You're right. like, wait a minute. Why yeah. you must be like sixty? Because mm. you, you're getting all this work done. Mm -hmm. They're only fifty, yeah. but they pre they, they 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 try to prevent it so much that they end up right. looking actually older in a weird way. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. Yeah, I go on dates with girls and their lips are so big oh. and they're like twenty eight. It's just like, like what? Whoa! It's I just, think that's like once you start that. Once you start, it's a slippery yeah. slope. The problem is once you start, it it goes out, and then like people are getting all this reconstruction without like the surgery. That stuff freaks me out. They're putting all this goop in there, and then like the goop you've seen horror stories where like, oh yeah, it makes a perfect jawline, right? And then like six months later, it's in here, mm -hmm. and they got yeah. like, uh oh, we'll 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 melt that and we'll put it back in here, and then you spend the rest of your life just becoming like an experiment, yeah. you know? Right, so my girl had me watching that botched show. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, those really, things. Really, really, really gnarly stuff. Well, he's a plastic surgeon on TV right. that fucks shit up. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, yeah kind of. It, it's pretty interesting, man. We've been we've been doing this podcast for a while. It's introduced us to, like, so many interesting people. Yeah. And, uh, like, w when you have a career in show business for as many decades as you have, like, <laughs> it is very rare to be so well adjusted oh you know like it seems yeah. like you've really navigated it super well and uh yeah especially you know, like 90s you know actors or mm -hmm. yeah you did, right. I, I don't think i ever heard about you having like any sort of uh drug problem, drug no, problem you, know, man, you know man i never never got into the drug thing honest honest to goodness I mean, I mean, we, we I had just, uh you know. jody sweet on okay okay and then, uh, okay Corey feldman, Corey feldman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it. i feel like uh, are you guys a, a part of like a fraternity or so, you know, of, of like the 90s was a special time and you guys all had something to relate to? It was, you know, it's so weird, man. It, it, it really was. And like I said, I, I knew all of them and I know all of them. I just never ran in those circles. Yeah. I never did it. I, I literally, I loved my family. I love my brothers so much. We, I swear to God, I spent most of my time with them and, and, and I really did spend the other free time that I had with my best friends from Philadelphia, like Chris and, 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 and Ryan, and just my guy, like my guys that I grew yeah. up with. I, mm -hmm. And they would fly out. My cousin, Neil, I would rather them fly out for the summer. And it was true. Chris would come out for two weeks. You know, um, Neil would come out for two, three weeks and then I would work a little bit in the summer and then we'd go on a family vacation with my brother for two, three weeks. And that was my summer. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and then other than that, I just, it was work was my, I drug like I love to work still to this day I love working I love you know the opportunity to be successful take care of everybody uh, it was I never I, drinking like I mean yeah when I was 21 and stuff I mean, sure I drank but I never I never got to that place where I needed to drink still to this day I can I, I don't need an, a, an alcoholic beverage at all I what yeah. I do need to do is work out I, I do feel that and uh, I use a lot of my own body weight so I can do it at home now which is great especially mm. since the last two and a half years of mm -hmm. nightmare but uh, push-ups and pull-ups little lightweight on my arms that's it and some light cardio but honestly like a nice hike or jumping jacks is all guys need all this treadmill stuff is yeah, useless. Wow. So, so um, 
I, I really, really think that that's impressive. The whole we're gonna treat this career like little league. Yeah, you know, that's I, what I, it was. I, I've never heard that, and I think that that just makes so much sense. And it's probably got a lot to do with with why you know you, you stayed on a, the right track. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. At the same time, though, when you're in high school, even middle school. Aren't you on the cover of like Tiger Beat? Everything. Like uh, mm -hmm. you're like you're like a teen. Yeah, teen magazine. Throb. Talk about an understatement. I mean, this guy is still the most throbbing heartthrob ever. I don't think any of us can expect to look as good as Joey Lawrence. But what we can expect is to keep looking as good as we do right now for much longer if we just take care of ourselves and what we put in our bodies. Now, admittedly, I don't eat that great of a diet lately, but I don't have to worry too much because I'm filling in the gaps in my diet with athletic greens. This stuff is magic. It's absolutely delicious. And one serving is loaded with 75 different vitamins and minerals and probiotics, all kinds of healthy, whole food sourced nutrition. And it's absolutely delicious. I religiously start every day with it by dumping one of these packets into 16 ounces of water, swirling it up, and I can do that on a totally empty stomach, unlike all kinds of other supplements which aren't even delicious. This fills in the gaps in my diet, takes care of my nutrition, and it is delicious. Plus, if you go to athleticgreens.com slash stevo, then with your first purchase, you get five free travel packs of AG1, which again is what I use every morning, plus an entire year supply of immune boosting vitamin D. Again, that's the deal that you get if you go to athleticgreens.com slash stevo. So dude, jump on that deal and let's get back to throbbing. <laughs> Yeah, like you're 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 like a teenage sex symbol, like heartthrob. You had the flannel wrapped around your waist. <laughs> Cover like, the magazines. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you look back. There was a decade there where, you know, uh, whenever I would travel, we'd have to travel with security. I really couldn't drive anywhere. You know, I was driven, which is by the way was so weird because I love cars. I love to drive. I always love cars. Ever since I was like two years old, I could I could literally name a car off like a door handle. I don't know why, but wow. I've been obsessed. <laughs> I collected Matchbox cars, went to the Borrego models, and then you know big cars when I could do that. But um, and uh, it, it, it was a wild 10 years. I mean, it was amazing. You know, we do autograph signings. We'd go to like Paramus, New, New Jersey at a Sam Goody's there, especially when my first record came out and stuff. And, you know, like, like 30,000 people would show up. Now, Jeez. today, you would hear about that in two seconds. But back then, you know, it took a little while. Right. But that's the kind of crowds. I mean, we went to, we went to, and it was all over, it was all over the world. I mean, it was not just here. So yeah. it was, it was really a tremendous time. And yeah, but I never thought about it. Like, it was just weird. I never got, caught up in it I, I was appreciative of it sometimes I didn't appreciate it enough actually like exactly kind of what was happening you know right. and uh, you know um, but but I never I never it never was my life I was always excited to do the work and then get done like not well, deal with it you did know? you have uh, like girlfriends when you were in that phase like I did I did I, I I had a girlfriend you know um, for a long time that I met and then we were kind of together for like five years during that four mm -hmm. and a half five years during that which was rare and then um, and then dated a little bit and then you know like look I'm a, I'm a hopeless romantic so you know uh, <laughs> married the wrong person when I was young you know like 22 it lasted like six months 23 it lasted six months and then I got back together with my high school sweetheart believe it or not and we got married and then 15 years went by it was it was when we were just we just grew apart you know mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah. it makes me sad but just the way it works and just realize that's not the right person i have two beautiful daughters from that and i love my daughters and you know I, we share custody and i i see them literally all the time and every day you know but uh they are my life and i love them and uh, i pride myself on being the best dad that i can be but you know that bums me out because i wish that would have been right it just isn't. You know, my, my, my parents were married 30 years before they got divorced. I don't know why, <coughs> but uh, it just happens that way sometimes, you know, man? It just happens. Yeah. It's a bummer, but that's just the way it works. So, you know, uh, definitely not perfect dude. I mean, you you know, you make your mistakes and stuff, but, you know, I tried to mitigate those as much as possible. I think accountability, which was ingrained in me at a very young age, 
just taking responsibility for the things you do uh, incorrectly, <laughs> you know, sure. that's think, a big testament to sort of like realizing like, hey, man, you're not perfect and I'm far from that. So, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think there's accountability and then there's just plain beating yourself up. And I think you're giving yourself a hard time like, hey, dude, like relationships yeah. don't, don't. They just don't. Yeah. I, I wish they did. Amical yeah. divorce, if that's your worst thing yeah. that's pretty good yeah for, yeah for I mean, especially someone yeah, go, in your go easy on yourself j-law yeah, exactly. <laughs> come on j-law <laughs> no it's good you're still you know the number one j-law i know i know yeah <laughs> you know what's crazy though is that it really you it's this this desire to get married young and have your kids young it really is weird because you really you really have a much better chance of meeting the right person when you're older because the, the pretense is gone and you know right. you know who you are and yeah. you know you've grown into who you are and they've grown into who they are you know yeah. i mean i was lucky enough to meet finally i think the right person for me you know about uh, almost two years ago you know year and year and a half ago pretty much mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she's amazing you know and, and and you just never you realize nothing is perfect but you realize like wow when it's right that's what it is it's like a best friend you always grow up thinking like For opposites sure. attract it's great that I have my thing and she doesn't really know about my thing and I have and she has her thing mm -mm, man you actually want somebody that speaks the same language has the same sense of humor you can like be yourself around that when something's going down, like you actually want to talk to them, not like the specified friends that know who right. you are, mm -hmm. you know? Because yeah. that just divides like fissures in a relationship. Uh, she doesn't get it, so I'll talk to him, and then I'll talk to her because they get it, you know? And then you're not really right. bonding with the very person that you're supposed to grow old with, you mm -hmm. know? So Definitely. it's really a misnomer that I think a lot of times we get caught up in, but uh, I've realized that late, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Thank yeah. You to notice. So, so when, when did the, the, the music kick in? Music was, believe it or not, first that's what i love which is why i was able to sing and dance oh on that's why you were tap dancing mm -hmm. on johnny right. carson's right. desk and then you had it a was, top 100 billboard it was like top 19 album it was a top 19 album it was a number it was number one on 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 the the single the nothing my love can't fix was number it was a number yeah. one song and and top five on billboard r and r was was radio plays right and billboard was was sales so it was top five on billboard number one on r and r Whoa. uh it, it did really well that first record um classic story happened with that where just I'll just leave it at horrible mismanagement by the team and a lot of stealing and all that stuff and <laughs> left a terrible taste in your mouth and then just kind of got shepherded Wait, into when a... when you say the team, is that the label? Or? Yeah, it was just a bunch of... The label and my personal music management and just... It was a big mess. It doesn't, right. I'll just music, leave it, leave it, music leave management in the 90s sounds uh, awful. It was... Especially just, for like a pop star. Yeah, it's like... It was just... It was just a... It was just a... It was just a... An embezzlement scheme waiting to happen, you yeah, know, if you yeah. didn't have the Hawks out. And, and my parents... You know, they learned on the fly. My mom was not savvy about any of that stuff. So, and, and you know, I, I learned the hard way by basically having every mistake made, you know? Um, so, anyway, left a bad taste in my mouth. We did a second record, but I didn't want to, and it didn't do well. And then I just took a break because I just didn't want to do it. But the first record did super good. So, we started releasing music again about three, four. I've always released every now and then a little song here and there, but about three years ago, seriously started to release some music again. And it's done really, really, really well. And um, this latest collab I did with Matthew Gerard, who's a great great pop writer he's written smash hits for everyone from smash mouth to miley cyrus to kelly clarkson to everybody he really believed and we started co-writing some stuff and this newest stuff that i've been releasing has been crushing on spotify and stuff which is weird so all of a sudden wow Sick, that's, that's interesting so you, so you had success with music in the 90s out of the game when there Very was much. no but before napster before any like, of that oh and yeah. so there was just pure money yeah and then now like you come back and it's a completely different totally landscape different, man. yeah man and uh it's so weird and you say it's doing very well now but it but, is you do it on streams you know it's just the barometer of doing well too is like right. i mean you know back then it's like right. i mean you 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 know a million records was like good that's pretty good million man way to go platinum good job you know let's get to two million let's get to three million right you sell a million records to, i mean you're adele you know like there's very few people right. that even right. go half a million now i mean i mean yeah. it's right, crazy right, right there's very few people and it's only because people covet the actual you know physical item otherwise they wouldn't do it either you know so right. once we started giving away music it's Changes everything. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're counting for Adele to hit a million, like an iTunes purchase. Like, like that. Right. It's not just right. the the, the right. if, if you only counted the physical CDs, oh, then then be these, nothing. Yeah, be mm -hmm. nothing. It'd be, not, be, nothing. be, be mere but, fraction. Yeah. But without people actually purchasing music, you're still getting meaningful revenue from the Spotify. You get it, but but the volume has to be 
great. I mean, mm -hmm. it has to be millions how, and millions of streams. How you know, are you promoting to, your music to, to reach people? Are there you know, it's such, and that's another crazy thing. I mean, you, you do it on your socials, you know, uh, it goes viral. Those, those things, they take on a life of their own. They're still trying to, I mean, look, the whole world has been changing, right? The last three to five years has been a complete upheaval of pretty much everything. I mean, uh, I think and it's, it's going to continue. I mean, it's, it's yeah. now, look at oh, what's yeah. happening with, you know, digital currency and NFTs. And Are I, you into I, that? I, my brother is obsessed with it. My middle brother, Matt, um, he's just a, he's been, uh, you know, diving in deep to all that stuff. I am just like, man, I don't know. I mean, how I- many, How many brothers do you have? You have two? I have two younger brothers, yeah. Two younger yeah, brothers. Matt, you know, who uh, just turned 42 yesterday, and my brother Andrew, who's 34, so. Andrew, 34, is the director? He's a director. He's the one that directed- The uh, Lifetime movie. The Lifetime movie that I met my fiance on, by the way, which is crazy, because oh, wow. I've never, ever, like, worked with someone and, like, dated them. Like, never. I never did that, and this was crazy because my brother put together this movie. He wrote it, and and it was, and I was like, okay. He asked me to do it, and I said, all right. And at the last minute, the actress they had set, it was in the middle of COVID. You know, the actress they had set. So we were all, I didn't, nobody knew anything. You know, so I was like, all right, let's just be chill. Let's just be careful. At the last minute, she traveled or something, and then you know, obviously that was like, no, we can't do it. So they had to recast. I didn't even have time. To, I didn't know who it was. I was like, what? I was going on the set, hadn't seen a picture, nothing. I was like, Andy. You're killing me, dude. If this is anybody but you, like, there's no way I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. No way. So I was a little bit of a brat going in there because he's my baby brother, and I was like, I'm doing you a solid, man. I don't even know who I'm working with. And so, she was your on-screen romance? Yes. So, so yes, I was the bad guy, but yes, she was. I was the one that was trying to swindle her money, and then she ends up with the right guy. But yes. Uh -huh. So, but it was our movie, yeah. So um, and. Uh, Day one, I come in there, you know, with, I'm always a pro, but I came in there with, like, brotherly attitude, you know, like, uh -huh. <clears throat> let's do it, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, you know, and the first scene, of course, which I was so pissed off, was a scene where we were in bed, and, you know, and I had to, like, share a bed. And I'm like, this is ridiculous, bro. I am so pissed at this schedule. You know, he's like, just do it, please. <laughs> and, I, you know, I, I swear to God, yeah, please. So I get in head. there, and she and she cracks a joke because she's one of the funniest people that I've ever met, and uh, she's like that. What's what's up, attitude? You know, and I was like, what? <laughs> Who is this? You know, and lo and lo and behold, man, like three weeks goes by, and she's literally the coolest person I ever met. You know, and then like you know, 18, 19, 20 months later, it's like it's been the greatest nineteen months of my life, especially coming out of. You know, a tough time, you know, divorce. Yeah. And, you know, the divorce is funny. People hear divorce and they see a filing date and, you know, that's the end of it. You know, they don't realize that right, right, two, right, three, right. four years before then. So it's so funny because so many times they hear like, oh, well, he got divorced in, you know, uh, or filed for divorce in June. And by, you know, November, yeah, he's the, dating the, someone else. And you're the like, ink, the ink wasn't even dry. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Don't you love that? It's like, you know, so I'm like, well, wait a minute. First of all, November, that's like five and a half months. And but more than that. It's right. five years. Right. You know, I mean, it's you know, they don't time. see the deterioration and how right. and the pain and the ups and downs from everybody involved in that relationship, both yeah. sides. You know, so that's what kills me. But at any rate, it's been the greatest nineteen months, and Amazing. I'm very blessed and thankful for that. So. And and the the lifetime. But Andy movie. directed that Deadly Deed. He directed yeah. that and wrote that. So it's, that was uh, so. There's a Lifetime movie, and that's different from the Amazon movie. Yes. Then he put together. We put together a, a, a little Christmas film that we sold to Amazon called Mistletoe Mix Up. Which was my brother Matt had the had the lead in that. I was a supporting character in that. Cause we try to do things together when we can. Yeah. We actually haven't worked together. We had a big show together called mm -hmm. Brotherly Love and did a bunch of TV movies together. And then for like literally 15, 17 years, you know, it's the classic thing. Like we couldn't get on the same page to work together. So we always hung out, but you know, like we were doing our own thing. So and then you kind of get to a point where you're like, I guess like the Jonas Brothers, like you know, they broke apart, right? Didn't want to yeah. record, and and then all of a sudden, even after Nick had all that success, he's like, I kind of would rather just do it with my brothers, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of like what we do is like. When it makes sense, we kind of like working together, so we just so do cool. it. So there was one Jonas brother that was like more, Nick. More Nick broke out. Than the oh, others. Nick for sure is the Nick most for successful. sure. Yeah, he's I been mean, like a judge on The Voice. Like he's, he's yeah. I mean, Nick had wow. massive hits by himself. Yeah. Now Joe Jonas did as well with D DNCE. He had a couple of oh, hits. Yeah, yeah. Remember Cake by the Ocean and stuff yep. like that. But but Nick, I mean, had like two. In my opinion, <laughs> so I love pop music. He had two great solo records. And so did Nick's not like need. Alec Baldwin. He's <laughs> Nick's like <laughs> Alec. Alec. Yeah. So he certainly didn't, in a business sense, need to go back and record with his brothers. Right. It's like Justin. I don't know if he'll ever go back with NSYNC, but he certainly doesn't need to. You right. know. Right. Um. And Nick did because, and I love that. I I always root for those guys because I love the fact they truly do love each other. You know yeah. what I mean? And so do my 
bros and I, we love each other. And so that's why we started working together again. And we said, let's just have some fun, man. This world's crazy. I don't know and what's going yeah. on. So during COVID, we're like, let's just work together, you know? And we did it. And then it was like the number one holiday movie on Amazon. So we're going to do a sequel to that, which is fun. Sweet. And uh, and then my fiance and I, which is the first time I've ever done this, we wrote a script together, <clears throat> a romantic comedy in the vein of like, uh, you know, when Harry met Sally, like a throwback sort of dialogue driven rom-com with Edge. Mm -hmm. And um, and we sold it to uh, Tubi, well, which Fox and their streamer Tubi, and we're going to shoot it over the summer. And I and I and I had them hire Andy to direct it. So nice. yeah, super cool. That's really cool. What was the dynamic like originally when you like? Because you're you're already kind of famous, right? And your younger brothers are like, we want to act too, right. or yep. They were That's just like, we want to be like Joey, of yep, course, pretty right? Much. And you were so, like, don't do it. I was like, don't do it. You'll never live up to it, guys. Ever. Yeah, exactly. You got in no. my massive <laughs> five foot nine shadow. Right. right. Um, so was it like really competitive? Were you like, was let me help you guys out? Was, How was that? I was basically doing anything I could. You know, I, I never thought about it as competition. You know, um, so I, I just didn't. I mean, they I put them on the shows that I was on, and you know, and then they got their own shows because they, you know, they were on their own vehicles because they're really good. Yeah, uh, and uh, and it, we we always did that. Always. Was there any like advice you had for them? I mean, you had avoided a lot of trappings. Just anyway, lead by example. So. I just led yeah. by example. You know, uh, and my brothers are a little rowdier than I am. You know, but I I, I always a lead by example. A little rowdier. Yeah. Oh yeah. Andy's like <laughs> Andy's like the rock the rock and roll guy. You know and it, you know, yeah. So uh, they always, uh, you know, they, they, uh, yeah, they were just a little more rambunctious than me, you know. But I was like Grandpa Joe. I don't know why, you know. Uh -huh. But I just never. I was always in the sports and just I don't know, man. School and working. I love to work. I love to be clear headed. I, I never like rolling onto a set like out of my mind. I would see it so many times from my peers, just going like, "How are you going to function today, bro? What? Mm -hmm. How late were you up? What were you doing? Mm -hmm. You know." Right. So for me, mm -hmm. even to this day, like when I have, if I have a seven a.m. call, I'm up at four. I take a shower, work out, eat breakfast, and then I come to set. I'm I'm ready. I don't need to like. Make me somebody before I can right, roll the right. set. I just never approached it that way, you know. So it's like a sports thing. You got to yeah, be prepared, right. you know. So <clears throat> that's you. where I come from. We, we we've had a ton of Dancing with the Stars alumni. Okay, yeah. and you guys are both uh, Dancing with the Stars alumni. It's great. I, yep, that's right, dude. I, I was on there. That's yeah. right, dude. What, what, what year did you do that? I did it. It was uh, season. Three. Holy it was shit. a massive season because it was just you know that was I mean the ratings were insane that year. Right. Uh, I think they were getting like they were averaging twenty million or something like that. You in episode. Emmett Smith. It was Emmett and Mario and I turned in Mario Lopez and, yeah. Smith right. and I turned into this oh, yeah. like like <laughs> dance off. It was like a it was like a trio and we were <clears> all really competitive. I think the first week like we got we got triple tens like consecutively week <laughs> after week after week after each other so it, it was like I think Mario did it first and then I did it and then Emmett did it and then it was on so we all got to the finals and then Emmett won you know <clears throat> but it was it turned into this massive thing so we, you know they, they still do the Dancing with the Stars tours but they're much diminished from I mean we went on a stadium right. tour so wow. when I wow. toured it was, and it was myself and Joey Fatone and Drew Lachey and Joey McIntyre and Emmett. And we literally, I mean, we sold out Staples Center for three nights. Wow. So that's how big the tour was. Holy it was, shit. I had a bus that was, believe it or not, the bus that they, that I got to travel around in. We each had our own buses. I mean, I, didn't, I had never done anything like this because even when I toured for my music, I had to do it by plane because I was doing show, my show, so I could never go on like a tour. So mm -hmm. I flew over to London and I tour and I flew, but I never did like the bus tour. Mm -hmm. So I was wow. like, oh man. They built a bus, I guess, for Jennifer Lopez, right? This crazy cool bus. She, I guess, then got pregnant, like postponed her tour for a minute. So I got this <coughs> brand new, like, multi-million dollar bus. Pre-post. It was, yeah, it was crazy, dude. Like, I mean, flat screens. It was, it, I never, I actually, and they put us, they treated us so good, but they, we always stayed at, like, whatever the best hotel was. There were so many nights where even if there was, like, a Four Seasons there, I was like, I'm just going to stay on my bus, dude. That's what I do. I yeah, love this Steve. bus. I don't want to, <laughs> yeah, why would I get out of my bus? Like, yeah. I love it. I showered. I got my TV on. I'm, you know, I don't need it. So, right. 18 months on and off, we toured. And it was the coolest 18 months. It was so much fun, dude. And the show is, like, you would come out and do a dance or something, Yeah, right? so basically what we do yeah. is, We'd each have our solo dances that were like fan favorites, mm -hmm. and then we'd have group when numbers. When you say solo dances, but with your partner, with our partners, right? right. So mine was Edith Slewinski, who's not on the show anymore, but she was fantastic. Um, and 
we, I, we intermittently they would like stagger our things, you know, and we would and we would come out and we would uh, scam likely. Uh, don't, you, don't, you, don't, don't you know these new things? Scam likely. Mm-hmm. It should like. be scam definitely. It's yeah, not yeah. likely. Likely uh, scam. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know. But, but anyway, so we would come out and they'd like stagger us. So I do my my solo number and then Emmett and then Mary and then we'd have like a group number with the three of us, which no one had ever seen before. Mm. And then they have company numbers. We had Ray Chu and the crew that was our band. We had like a massive. It was like a pop tour. It was wow. not. We had rigs. They we had eighteen trucks. They loaded us in. Whoa. I mean, it literally was like a Bieber tour. It was yeah. that big. And, and wow. I gotta believe that the uh, the tour was for you far more lucrative than being on the show. Way more. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, they were. It was okay, but they exponentially they've realized to get talent they have to pay a lot more. You know, back. But the right, tour. Right, right. We knew what had happened, so and they, the more they're paying, the still the numbers are going to go down. I think that's what happens. I, I, yeah, I got in pretty early. I was on Dancing on the Stars uh, with. Um, what season were you on? I, I was on Dancing with the Stars in two thousand nine. Okay, in the, in the very so you got in early because I was in six. Yeah, so you were like season six. Yeah, seven, uh, right? Um, so, so we got new music coming out. We're gonna yeah. let, we're gonna let everybody know about this. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where can How, they get it? Well, they can get it everywhere. They can get it on Spotify. They can get it on iTunes. Um, they can get it on Amazon Music. Um, they type in J Law. They type in Joey Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's get yeah. your J Law yeah. yeah. SEO number one. I swear, one. I said one day I've been asked this question: Are You ever going to do a movie with uh, Jennifer Lawrence? I said I'd love to do a movie with Jennifer Lawrence because literally they said the, the poster's got to be J Law, just one J Law, or just one J Law, and then just <laughs> arrows. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so you can get it every, everywhere. Um, we've released a lot of singles, and Guilty, which is this little five-song LP that I did with Matthew Gerard, is is going to be coming out in its entirety uh, at the end of February. So. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Do you um? Ha- are you the one putting like? That, presumably, you have music videos. We actually, you know, it's a weird thing because you don't really need music videos. We had to see how it was going to do. So I think we're going to record. I'm going in actually next week to record a brand new song with Matthew that I that I wrote with him called Bullshit, which is going to be I know it's BS, but Bullshit is the name, and it's it's <laughs> I've never done anything like that, but it just it, it, it's a cool little vibe. That's so, the edgiest thing you've ever done in your career. Pretty much. <laughs> it's uh, BS. Yeah, yeah. And it's called BS. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, man, it's just so weird racy, for me. But, uh... I mean, like, you know, it's just such a crazy thing to. The 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 amount of expletives in music today is qu- I know I sound a hundred but it's mind blowing. I have two daughters, you know. I have a, right. I have an almost sixteen year old daughter and 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 a and a almost twelve year old daughter. I mean, dude, like, I, like I grew up, you know. I mean, it, it is nothing like Ludacris and Snoop, and I mean, it is nothing compared to those guys that I grew up with. I mean, it is it is astounding. Well, I mean, like the Ghetto Boys were pretty. Yeah, they were, but I mean, this early. was. Nah, but, but I think filth, it's the actual. I think it's the sentiment. It's not necessarily the words. Because I'm not. I'm not. A, right. I, look, I'm from East Coast. I mean, I grew up on sets. I got a mouth like a trucker, but. But it's it's the actual sentiment. It's not really the words. Edge All is right. great. You know, like go fuck yourself. What I'm cool with that. But it's. The the way they speak, and especially since I have daughters, like I'm just like, oh my god. I mean, some of these lyrics right, are right. astoundingly wild. That mm-hmm. that would be, and then these little girls are singing them. Yeah, and you're going like, are right, you? Right, I always right, tell my daughter, like, do you hear what you're singing? Yeah, they they panned when the whoever did the the wet ass pussy song. And then you pan to the audience, and it's like nine-year-old girls in there singing it with their mom. <laughs> like, like, I'm cool, and I'm cool, but it, like at some point you're going like. Wow! It's like, like how, how the fuck? Right? How does the fuck? It t- I mean, wow! That is that's crazy because, like, I'm I'm all for you know like like I mean I, I grew up in a house full of women so I'm I, you know and I mean I raised a house full of women so my mother was like the dominant figure in my house so strong women is amazing but I'm like how does this sort of lend itself to that whole I remember, narrative? I remember like, when strong I was, women uh, we got to support respect and then like a wow it's crazy right. but you know look it's not for me to say if they can do what they want obviously and they haven't done a success with it and they're really catchy so I get it but. Boy, do I I fall into that old dad fart vibe where I'm like, hey, what the hell is? No, 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 no. <laughs> nope. So they right. have like dad's playlist now yeah. where they go, I gotta skip this one because you're not gonna let me play it. I'm like, you're so right. Funny. I'm not gonna let you play that in my car. But hopefully they'll like me right. for it when they're older. They hate me. You know, they 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 don't think it's cool now. But so many times, my parents or my grandparents, especially my grandfather, did did things, and I was like, man, what? And but when I grew up, I was like, wow, dude, you were so right. Well, I remember, for I remember sure. we bought the the Chronic. Uh, a 92 oh album gosh. and yep. like my dad saw it and he's like 
the marijuana leaf and then he's like and it's parental advisory and he threw it in the trash you <laughs> know it's crazy? like i know i Dude, grew up when the parental advisory meant something right, of course right. of course do you know that i i had a very similar experience like that because a buddy of mine turned me on to andrew dice clay okay <laughs> yeah. in seventh grade when he, nice. when he had the that sentiment there dice don't hurt yeah. him right and Little boy blue. He Little needed boy, the money. That's right. I still know them all. I literally could do them all for you right now. Anyway, so in seventh grade, I'm back in school, right? Fully submerged, right? In school. And we're going on a coal country trip because Philadelphia is, we're going to go to coal country. Overnight trip. And my buddy Ross, no joke. I don't even know where Ross is. I lost touch with that. I don't know where Ross is. But he was a good friend of mine in seventh grade. And he's on the bus ride. We got like a three-hour bus ride. He goes... Hey, Joey. I'm like, yeah. He's like, have you heard this new comedian? I'm like, no, but I love comedy. You know? He's like, great. He's like, listen to this. And for three hours, dude, I memorized that entire, both sides of that mm-hmm. tape. Okay? When he was like, what the fuck? So some chick was sucking my, you know? I mean, it's like, I mean, yeah. fuck you, fuck ball. You know, this whole thing. Little Bo Peep <laughs> fucked his sheep, blew a horse, licked its feet, shaved his ass. So very nice. Tongued his balls, not once, but twice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'm going to embarrass everybody that's listening, especially my family. My family, oh, God, Joe. No, they still do it for my brothers, and they're like, Joe, really, shut the fuck up. Like, hey, <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I get home, and my dad picks me up from the bus stop, <laughs> I swear to God. And he's like, my dad loved comedy. So I was like, Dad, he's like, how'd the trip go? It was great, but guess what? I found this new comedian. He's like, no way. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, can we go to Sam Goody? He's like, I'm taking my son to get a comedy tape. Absolutely. Because he always tried to get me to listen to like, George Carlin and stuff, but I, I didn't uh-huh. get it. So I, and that, George Carlin's amazing, but. At 12, I was like, I don't, sure. you know, it's okay. You know, I, I like Eddie Murphy and stuff, you know. So he was like, great, let's do it. Comedy, fantastic. So we go in there, Andrew Dice Clay, this sounds great. So he puts it in, I swear to God, in the first line, it's like, Dice, Dice. He's like, da, 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 da. So I was fucking some chick. My dad goes, okay, what the fuck? What is this? <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. Nope, nope, nope. He popped the thing out just what your dad did. He's like, absolutely not. That's so yeah. wow. Yeah, but still to this day, I remember, I know it all. Oh. Yeah. But he's like sitting there like, can't we just listen to Carlin, which is also like it is dirty but, and but, you know. But again, yeah. it was like a whole new dice was a I whole know. new he was a whole new level of exactly. like, which so is kind of like what the songs are now. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yes, right. yes. It's like the yes. wet ass pussy of his day. He was. Yeah. Right. He was. And you're like, girls, can't we just put on I the know. Thong song or something? <laughs> it is you, know? like, you become your parents. Yeah. You yeah. literally when you have children, I think you do. It's yeah. not that I'm like my parents. I mean, I am in certain regards, but the ch- my kid, like I just go and you know you become like a fart, man, like like a fart. And I, I try not to be. I think I'm pretty cool in a lot of ways, but that stuff, I just feel like it's my duty to just at least say this is inappropriate. You know, right? You at know, least I give them that. that. Yeah. Yep. And I do. I mean, they listen to it. I don't like ban it, but I just sure. go. This is li- just listen. All the masses just really take in what they're saying. Right. right. And like, I, yeah, great beat. I don't care. You know. I think there are a lot of like child stars and and kind of stars in general whose work is like very clean and family friendly but the the stars themselves are not you know like Bob Saget yeah yeah yeah, I was gonna say yeah yeah and and it it seems like uh I, I really get the sense that that you're the work you did in your career was all very family friendly and that that's genuinely who you were yeah. in, in your life. Yeah, I, I am. Look, man, I, I mean, yes. Really. I, I love I, that. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't have that underbelly side, you know, kind of what you right. see is what you get. Like I said, I'm not a perfect guy. You know, I, I got drunk off my ass a lot in my 20s, but I never got involved in those situations where it went too far, you know? Right. Um, I always had an awareness. My mom told me what you put into your body. Think about it, it has nothing to do with me. If you're at these parties and there's drugs flowing around, there's a lot of, if you do that to you, there's a chance that you can die. I love you, I don't want it to happen, but you're not doing it for me, you're doing it for you. And that struck such a chord to me, and I don't know what it was, but when it was presented to me, and there were several opportunities where it was, you know, and, and rampantly, obviously, you know, being famous and as famous as I was, and, and you know, it was everywhere, you know, mm-hmm. and I just was like, I got actually off on saying no. I really did, I was like, I don't need it, bro, get out of my, fa- dude, have fun, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and I just, because I wanted to go to the gym in the morning, I didn't want to screw up my gym schedule, I didn't want to mess up my work schedule, I was, mm-hmm. you know, getting up and driving my brother to school and then driving to the set and, you know, doing my work and then, you know, I would get and, a workout in on the, on the uh, lunch break, you know, so like, I, I don't Jesus. know, I just and did that. Being a, a 
heart on the cover of heartthrob magazines yeah. just the opportunity to act out sexually that you had yeah. and you didn't take advantage I mean, of that like, I mean it, that's know. where I kind of feel mad at you well <laughs> and you know what my best buddy does too Dave if you're listening he's like man we became best friends at about I was like about 17 or 8 or I was, actually I was about 18 right and he was like my god if I just met you five years ago you know and yeah, what, yeah. Uh, but you know he uh, he look. comes over he's like let's get fucked up and get some pussy and you're like nah dude I'm going to the gym like, right now yeah, yeah. Uh, dude we gotta focus <laughs> yeah. we got goals what? man we got goals <laughs> no uh, no look look I mean look. there was there was there was opportunity you know uh, you know there was some fun that I had for sure but I never I never I mean there was you know there was amazing experiences that I was able to have where I'm like I cannot believe this person like likes me you know I can't believe I'm kissing this person, but you know, it's just, I mean, I never, it never got out of control. Let me just put it that way. I never, it, it was never in a situation where I allowed myself to just be out of control. I didn't know what I was doing. I always wanted to be aware of what I was doing. Yeah. I mean, like Scott and I, for sure, probably not Paul, but Scott and I, we're, we're that, we're like, we're, we're both sober alcoholics. We're both no, like, it. you know, yeah. like super like, you know, crazy histories of acting out sexually and i think that the dynamic for for us and for you know a lot of guys if not most guys is that you know there, there's something about the conquest of you know a sexual conquest mm. that where, where it's that that validates you i know you know it's that like validates finding you. your identity and you like, know, like yeah. that if, if, it's if, all if, wrong it's if you can, so if, wrong if you can hook up with a chick then that then that mm. somehow boosts your self-worth when in reality like having like promiscuous sexual encounters does not increase one's self-worth it depletes it mm -hmm. you know right. and right. and it seems that like right. the more you act out trying to validate yourself you're actually just driving you know you're you're digging making, deeper and like, deeper into a hole. Yeah. Like, like, like well, what, what, what girl wants to you know, live happily ever after with the guy who humped 500 chicks, right. you know? Like, and, and, yeah. and that's, that's that's where yeah. guys are considering that validation. Yeah. And it sounds like you just, Scott and I were not secure in who we were, right. you know? Like, right. we, we, had very, we were very insecure, and that's why we wanted to act out. Right. And I just get the sense, again, that, that you were very secure in who you were, and you didn't need to do that. I think so. I was very secure in that area, for sure. You know, when it came to being, <laughs> unfortunately, being on TV and doing everything, I overanalyzed myself a lot. You know, like, I get insecure about my actual self. Mm. You know, like, you know, is is my hair okay? Or, you know, are the eyebrows too much? Is the beard too much? <laughs> Your hair is just fine. No, but, I mean... <laughs> You're you know, perfect. But, no, but, no, but, no, <laughs> yeah. but... No, but I, mean, I would, I would perfect. always get, I would always get really, in, really insecure about that, you yeah. know. Um, so I think I took it on myself, like about how I looked, my, my first, my personal being was, were the clothes okay, everything like that. Mm. I, it never, but I, and and that I obsessed over, you know. I was worried about more than yeah. about being, you know, like you know, perfect or trying to be okay or close to perfect, you know, mm -hmm. which is impossible and nobody should be. And actually it's much more attractive to not be perfect, you know? So, but I think that because I started so young and I was in a system where you, you were in a grind, man. I mean, but coming out of the eighties, nineties, it was like, there was no get out of jail free card and nobody, you know, gave you like puppies when you were upset. You know what I mean? Like yeah. mm. if you didn't do your job, you were fired, you mm -hmm. know, like, and yeah. there's a brutality to that, but I don't think going as far as we've gone on the other side, which is being too soft, is good either. There's a middle ground, which is great. Mm -hmm. You got to be accountable. You got to take responsibility for your actions. Everything is not somebody else's fault. You know, if you right. don't step up, there's right. a, there's a, the world is if you don't do your job, and you work for a boss, and he he thinks or she thinks some way. You have to step in line with that. You work for them. Yeah. Now, maybe one day you'll be the boss. Right. But this thing, like, I can do what I want even though I work for you, that didn't fly when I was growing up. I mean, you got yeah. fired, you know? So right. that, to me, I think I then took it personally and was like, I, I got to be perfect all the time. And that's where I became insecure. But not with, not with, right. uh, you Chicks. know, yeah, not with, like, notches on your belt or whatever that old horrible right, saying right, is right. you know to like to to, right. to 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 like make myself feel better yeah. about myself you know my, my self-worth came from just the kind of work i did if i felt good about it and the way i treated my family and and the right. way i treated my friends you know that's where my it's cool the ownership from. you talk a lot about like ownership <laughs> and the way your mom put like drug use she was like don't do it for me it's like for, yeah it's you it's you your decision you'll just or you're only hurting yourself and she it was told like, me so many things about that stuff even like sharing food and stuff she's like you know you want to you want to get cold sores go ahead man you know suck down all the you know you want to swap spit god knows what you're going to get mouth one of the dirtiest things on the planet you know so i was like but you know and for me it was like 
Yeah, like you really want to know somebody so that you can ask questions, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, you know, uh, you have any weird, like, mouth shit going on? You know, because I really like you. You know, instead of just going, just diving in and going, like, two weeks later, like, what the fuck is it? Oh, my, you know? Yeah. Like, I was so worried about that shit, you know? So, yeah. it, Scott, Scott and I were like, ask no questions, <laughs> act out as much as possible, and then be like in the grips of terror over what well, have I done? Yeah, and, you know and what? I'm a germaphobe. You know what? I had friends like that. <laughs> yes. But I had friends like that that would call me crying, going like, I don't know what the fuck, dude. I know I'm getting something. And, you know, no, more times than not, they didn't. But, right. like, there were a few times where my friends were like, oh, shit, you know? And it, right. unfortunately, look, Everybody goes through their own things, but that's the journey of life, and that's what it is. But man, if you can prevent some of it, like prevent it, yeah. try, you know, yeah. do your best. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, I, I know we gotta let you go, dude. Let's uh, promote <clears throat> some, some stuff for you. We got sure. we got the socials. Let's, let's let them know what that is. Yeah, I am. Uh, it, well, it's at Joey Lawrence on um, Instagram and Twitter, and I actually uh, Joey Lawrence on TikTok, which I just started. Wow, nice. I just brand. I my my daughter's like, Dad, what well, do you got to do it? And right. so I was like, All right, I'll try. So we put up a couple brand new things on TikTok, cool. uh, and uh, yeah, you know, look, the socials are doing all right. I I have a very loyal fan base, as you know. Uh -huh. It's like these numbers; they're so bloviated. So many times you hear these numbers, like oh, 50 million, you know, 80 million. But you look at engagements; they'll like put something out, right? Like nobody cares. So you know, right. I got like I got like you know like. 400,000 on Facebook. I have like, you know, 250,000 on IG. I got, you know, you know, that's what it is. Twitter's another like 350,000. But th like when we put out a single, like, you know, 85,000 downloads. So like people are, my fans are really, really, really that's engaged because cool. I never hired a company to do it. It was all myself. I haven't been doing it that long and it's growing now exponentially, I think, because I'm talking about it and like, putting up videos my my lady is great with that she's helping me do that because i never oh. showed any other like i was always afraid to like be myself <clears throat> on that thing be stupid and just be goofy and i love to mess around and just do dancing and you know and so she do, do you break out the tap shoes yeah yeah well, i'm gonna do that desk. i'm gonna do that that's <laughs> actually a good dude, idea dude, it's gotta be on reenacted do you have like uh do you have an old there, clip of it not, I do. and then on tiktok do do well nobody nobody, dude. nobody oh, filmed the audition did nobody filmed the audition man i wish i did but nobody yeah. nobody nobody Ugh. did you know it was actually the 29th anniversary of of my first number one hit coming out it was uh a two it was on the ninth so just for the hell of it, like we intercut, I put it on TikTok, we intercut a little bit, my actual music video that was on, and then I recreated that now just for nice. a second, but as myself, yeah. And it did super great, it I did amazing. It. So anyway, stuff like that's fun and just letting people know. Cause they, even though I've been around a long time, they very few people know about actually my personal Sure. Stuff. They don't really know. You know, I was old school. You kept that <laughs> private. So right. I'm just Mystery. now sort of embracing the fact that I can be, you know, a little more, uh, you know, vulnerable and sort of expose some of that stuff right. that I feel comfortable with. You know, yeah, so. and I would encourage you to make music videos too. I'm going to. I know yeah. that is something. I think for BS, we're going to actually, which will be fun. Especially with yeah. the, the director brother. I yeah, think I know. The, you know. No, we're going to. We this was a test run. A lot of people invested. You know, um, you know, Matthew invested a lot to bring this to life, and I think he wanted to see if it had some legs and it's got legs so now is like phase two that's why we just did cool. a five song uh and now we're going to do five five more right. so yeah smart <clears throat> and uh you know the christmas movie on yeah mistletoe but... mix up is still on amazon it's going to be great uh frankie meets jack will be on to be next year uh and uh we're doing a brand new series which i I will only say that it's really exciting. It's it's the team from the Wedding Crashers, which I've always loved, uh, and uh, it is a back with the brothers again in a nice. total, but as grown ass men uh, for the first time in twenty years. Wow! That's great. And uh, it's single camera, and it is super super good, man. It's really funny and really edgy, and I think people are going to be. But yet we're not like it's it's very vulnerable and edgy and funny all at the same time, and I think Sick. people are going to like it. I love it, man. It's been yeah. a real pleasure talking same to you, here, brother. brother. Yeah, yeah, I've been a fan for a long time. Damn. Yeah, well, thank you, man. Yeah, dude. J Law. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I didn't introduce the guys. This is Scott Randolph. And I would say the gorgeous Paul Brisky, but with not, even the man. No, no, he is. Yeah, wow. He is, man. He the is, mediocre man. Paul Brisky. Right on, dude. Awesome, no, that guys. really was great, man. Thank Thanks, you. dude. I appreciate it, brother. Truly. Thanks for the opportunity, man. There it is, dude. I really liked Joey Lawrence, man. And um, I wonder, should I just say that next week we know it's going to be his most famous co-star. Woof, I said it, I said it. We might have the host of Jeopardy. <laughs> Is that too much? I mean, that gave it away completely, but well, that's cool. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing it, I'm not. Yeah, okay, dude, we're riding it. We're riding with it, dude. I'm in a good mood. I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rock it, and uh, 
What can I say, dude? As I sit here, it's the night before this comes out, and that is Thursday, March 10th, which is the night of the biggest show of my life, dude. I'm so stoked. I'm nervous. I'm going to be in a 1,500-seat theater with people in the audience like Spike Jones, like I'm Knoxville, I'm gonna, like my people, bunch of celebrities, industry executives. Woof! It's time for me to flex like how far I've come in this uh, live comedy game. So if you're in L.A. and you're, it's Thursday, dude, if I can try and squeeze in there. Get in there, dude. Baby, come on. Thanks, dudes.